My name is Emma Patata Goose, but for artist reasons, like my signature is Nigani. So when I work professionally and like when I when I sign on my paintings is Nigani. In my introduction, I introduced myself as Nigani Gaboykwe. And so my name, Nigani, like my artist name, pseudonym, I guess is that what that is. Um, it comes from my Anishinaabe name, which means she, the one, the one who stands in front. And I was named by my grandfather. I come from a Tikmikshin Anishinaabe, and that's where I live. I live in a Tikmikshin with my family, uh, my mom and dad. Uh, Chuck Patata Goose is my dad, and Julia Pegmagabo is my mom. I have two brothers and an older sister who I'm very fond of. <laughs> so in my introduction, I also mentioned my nations, which is the Ojibwe Nation, Odawa Nation, the Potawatomi, which is like Anglicized from Bodewadmi, and Onyandaaga, which is Oneida, Oneida the Thames, Lenape and Oneida come from, oh, and Potawatomi come from my mother's side and Ojibwe and Odawa from my dad's side. My main style is woodland art, and I would say that it's like mostly painting, like the medium I use. And I also dabble in um, digital art, uh, graphic design, and just design in general, like drawing. A lot of that, um, I would say, stems from like my life experience. Through self-reflection and like dreams that I've had, I th for myself, I've, anyways, I really like draw like energy and like inspiration from those things. Also my life experience, but more so I do a lot of interpersonal work. So like how I think and how I see myself and how my emotions are influenced like by my, by my environment is really expressed in my mediums. I really think you can see like who I am as a person in my art. When I was growing up, and I know like a lot of people didn't have this opportunity, I was actually exposed to a lot of like my culture and like ceremony and I firmly believe that that is like ingrained in like how I carry myself. So what my mom likes to remind me is that my like by existing is like a form of resistance towards like colonial ways of thinking and ways of being and I think when I was growing up, like artistic ways of expression were always like around me. And I, I think even though I was always able to express myself like artistically and that was an outlet, it wasn't always like encouraged. And I always wanted more from myself and like, I wanted to be able to have like my voice heard, but I never, I always, I wasn't actually always like a person who was able to communicate well, like in a, like, like on a grand scale. Like I always wanted to be the best speaker. I always wanted to be like able to carry like a message, but sometimes I wasn't able to do that. And then 
I found that myself, I was able to, I guess, find my way to something that was not, like, easily interpreted, but, like, also easily, like easy for me to ex- like a way like I guess a way for me to express it was easier for me to express myself through painting drawing or even just dancing because I actually when I was younger I did dance and I I do I guess when I bring like growing up ceremonially ceremonially like around ceremonies it's kind of taught to you and like repeated to you that this is your way of life and this is how Anishinaabe is like Anishinaabe are so like Anishinaabe I guess are supposed to be and are supposed to always like have faith in themselves and always have like believe like believe in themselves I, I, I guess. I think in like artistic expression mostly I think I think about how the mainstream media sees indigenous people and their their articles and their way of dressing it's always seen as like something of the past <laughs> when I was in grade 6 we were learning about art and the way it was learned it was like prehistoric then it was indigenous art and then it was like all the modern ways of like artistic expression like it went from like the renaissance to like expressionism neo expressionism and like those kinds of i guess genres of art and i was just thinking like i wasn't really thinking about it really when i was 12 years old like what it meant to be indigenous and to like think about art and I kind of like I guess took it for granted where it's just like yeah like all of our art looks the same or all of our things look the same and like or this art is just like it's just like that because for whatever reason I guess through furthering my knowledge about like our histories and about what it means to be indigenous and like what it means to think indigenous like our art was like a main outlet for that and like our ways of like knowing so like our teachings our life experience our stories are ingrained in those like pieces of work and I kind of like it made me reflect on like what it, like what my art means to me because like before I was like I wasn't really good at expressing my own like emotions or like my own thoughts or like people always ask like well what's the deeper meaning to it and I'd be like well I just drew what I wanted to draw because that's what I felt like drawing but like as I learned about myself more I kind of like figured out what I wanted to say through that and like what I was actually doing with my art it was like me extending myself And sharing a bit more about myself without using actual words. And like, in a way, I found that powerful. Because it wasn't, it didn't need to be explicitly written down my life story. And it was like almost, almost free for interpretation. But more, more so, my story was in there. And people could take from it what they felt. And it kind of like, it was another way of connecting with someone and I think that was really special because sometimes I guess for a lot of people building connections or like just getting up and talking to someone is so hard growing up my mom and my sister were always like gifted in that way of like art so my mom was really good at beading and sewing and my sister was really good at painting and drawing and I always like thought of my sister as a role model to me and I always kind of like wanted to be like her or even to push a little further I kind of wanted to be better 
almost. Like, not like a sense, as in instance, like, I wanted to be better than her, but like better to like match her. Cause I wanted to like, om- like almost like be like with her when she like progressed. I soon like found out when like we like sit at the table together and like we'd be crafting together that I like there's some things I just couldn't do or like didn't even have like mental capacity or like patience to sit down and like try and figure it out I'd kind of get tired of it and like get frustrated with myself and like I can't do it I don't want like so I'd put it down and like walk away by suggestion of my mother (laughs) she'd always say like don't don't like force yourself to do something if you're not in the right headspace to do it so I always like kind of took that along with me I was like I'd take a break if I couldn't have the patience or I just wasn't in in a good like energy space so another one of my inspirations I would say would be Norval Morriso when I was in 12th grade I was in a university art class and he he was a subject that we were learning about and I, I really took interest in his way of like creating art. He really demonstrated to me that, like, even though he's like long passed away, he really demonstrated to me like through his imagery, like what it means to carry indigenous knowledge and what it means to carry that forward. And like, so it made me really reevaluate like my, like my ways of thinking and how I thought about my art. Norval Morriso taught me what it means to like have a legacy and like what it means to be determined and be, I think, be free in self-expression. Cause I think Anishinaabe people, well like all First Nations people, like indigenous people, like all over the world had that, that freedom to express, whether it be in the language like through music, a lot of our music is connected to spirituality. And like, it's kind of funny if you think about it, like people are like, I'm such a free spirit, but like, no, that's like a thing. Like to be truly free within yourself and to like fully believe in yourself leads to like being able to express yourself freely and in a kind way. Like Anishinaabe and Endemoin, which is like the like Anishinaabe way of thinking, you're always thinking in a kind way, which is like Kajayadzuin, a kind way. I want to be remembered for that too. Like I like I'm I know everyone doesn't have like their kindest moments or everyone isn't always like super nice all the time, but for me as an Anishinaabe Kwe, I think trying to move forward in a kind way is super important and then passing that on to other people and like showing kindness to other people even if they're not the kindest kindest to me I think that's so important because maybe that person needs that little bit of warmth towards them because maybe they have never been shown it and I think through my art I always like had this self-doubt like like, oh, my art, like, if, like in my lowest moments. My art is so ugly, like, no one's going to like it. Or what am I doing this for? Like, no one's, like, buying it. Or no one's, like, said they want they, they want anything. Or if I, like, someone does reach out and I tell them about it, they're like, mm, maybe not. I think in those moments, I kind I I in turn, I internalize that. But by doing that, I'm unkind to myself. How, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to show kindness to other people when I'm not even being kind to myself? For me, a lot of my art is kind of like poetry to myself about loving myself. I think it'd be to believe in yourself, even if it's not always around you. Or even if you're around people who may not believe in you, try and find people who are like, I guess, like-minded. Talk like a toxic 
like environment brings about toxic thinking and I think for myself anyways that made a huge difference when I surrounded myself with people who loved me or people who wanted to see me succeed or like pushed me towards my dreams I think that was like so important to like to me and then even to like young me like I think if I could go back I would tell myself like you're doing you're doing so good like your mind is so brilliant kind of like that kind of encouragement is like so needed within young people especially in young like young indigenous people because not they don't see themselves everywhere or they don't see themselves as like maybe being a top selling music artist or like the best selling fashion designer or like you know what I mean or like a new upcoming artist they don't always see that and I think I think it's it's mostly to believe in like the power of vision and how indigenous people are visionaries and I think to believe in that power is so important.